The following is a presentation of TFNN. 11 seconds. You've got 10 seconds. The countdown going on right now. Morrow up to Schultz. Five seconds left in the game. Do you believe in miracles? Yes! Let's go to uh, Ilka in uh, Boston. Ilka, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Steve, seriously, you guys are unbelievable. You are doing wonders for all the traders. Well, thanks. We appreciate that. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the March 4th, marvelous Monday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and thanks so much for joining me, folks. I absolutely treasure your presence here today, and my outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with the tools that each of us need in order to lead an inspired life, because leading an inspired life, folks, that is what it's all about. So let's go take a look at one of our tools. This is the tool. I love this tool. This is, and you'll know why I love this tool. This is the tool I call, there is no limit to your potential. That's right. There is no limit to your potential. Now, let me ask you a question. Or perhaps said another way. Maybe how about this? Perhaps said another way. You know, there are more possibilities. There's more possibilities for each of us than we can even imagine. So now let me ask you this question here. Is that your belief system? Is that your belief system out there? It's mine. You know that. You absolutely know that it's mine. But think of the difficulties. Think of the difficulties if you adopt that belief system that each of us have to overcome in order to believe that there is no limit to our potential out there. I mean, truly, from the time that we are born, from the time we're born, we're taught to think in terms of, of limitations, of boundaries, of restrictions out there. You know, uh, if we take a look, most of us, if we look around your, your yard, you see fences out there. You know, those might be just little subtle things, but there's fences for our property. Some of you, maybe you're driving right now because you're listening to us on TFNN.MOBI. I guarantee you there's a speed limit sign around there. So there's always limits. There's things that are trying to slow us down. And in fact, you know, there's folks that actually believe that our endurance is limited out there. But of course, we know that's not the case. We see that each year. Well, each year, you see it each year, certainly. You certainly see it every four years when you take a look at the Olympics. Always records are being broken. There is no limit to our potential. You always have to overcome those boundaries out here. Now, here is the trick. Here's the trick, and this sentence is so important, and it's really simple to write down. I would, If it were me, I'd write it down. Of course, I did write it down. You should write it down as well out there. Life, folks, life is consciousness. It's that simple. Life is consciousness. And what I mean by that is this. If we are conscious of our limitations, if we're conscious of our limitations, then so it will be out there. I don't want you to be conscious of your limitation. You know, Albert Einstein, he once wrote the most beautiful and most profound emotions we can experience are the sensations of the mystical. You know, for me, that means that our minds are filled with ideas and thoughts that show us how to build or create things that our imagination can, can conceive out there. There is no limit to your potential, folks. Write that one down. Let's go check out these markets out here. And thanks so much for doing this right now. We've got the Dow trading off about 40 points out at 14,034. ES Mini down about four points out at 1512. NASDAQ futures off about nine. Of course, being led by Apple. Apple breaking through, closing below the 435 low on Friday. That's not good news. That's not good news for the NDX 100 for sure. Uh, Russell 2000 off a couple of points. The King, King on a move up here, up about uh, 32 cents right now, right around the 82.40 mark. Uh, gold, gold is up five bucks again. Gold, folks, gold was uh, up a little bit on uh, Friday out there with King Dollar being out, uh, with King Dollar being up, I should say. Uh, silver up 15 pennies out of 28.64. Light Sweet Crude uh, just slowing down. It's uh, back. Backing off, it's down 12 ticks right now. Our call -in number, though, that has not changed at all. It's 877-927-6648. We'd love to uh, hear from you, hear how your weekend went. Across the uh, pond right now, the DAX is trading off 26 points out at 76. Uh, looks like, I can't even read that here. How about we'll just start off with the FTSE. Got a little fog in my uh, glasses. Uh, the uh, FTSE here, because it's so cold, so cold in Florida. 
It was like in the 30s uh, this morning. Still in the 30s, I think, outside here. Of course, we got it nice and warm. We got the fire. We got the fire going. We got the Tiger Butter Brew on the uh, Mr. Coffee Pot out there. Life is good. The uh, FTSE is down 35 points. The Nikkei was up last night. We'll take a look at the Nikkei for sure. That was up 46 points. Shanghai was down 90. That was a big one. That was a big hit. We'll take a look at the Shanghai. That was off almost 4%. Did any of you catch that uh, 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 60 Minutes? Uh, last night, I just caught the one segment, uh, the 60-minute segment that uh, was taught, was showing all of those cities in China. I mean, we're talking big, massive cities out there that have been built that have no inhabitants. That was pretty amazing. So I don't know if that helped to uh, trigger some of the problems with the uh, Hang Seng out there in the uh, Shanghai. The Hang Seng itself was off 100 and 100 was off uh, 342 points. That was one and a half percent. But the uh, Shanghai that really took a uh, that really took a move down and uh, off 90 points. As we start off taking a look at the markets here right now, what we're looking at is the ES Mini, the 30-minute chart. If you were with us on Friday morning, as the market was moving down, it was moving down, and, and in fact, going into the uh, 10 o'clock session, you know, I gave you a number to be paying attention to on the ES Mini and said if it closed at X. Uh, you would create a hammer candle. That's exactly what took place. And it's so important to be able to make sure you understand your candles out there because that's really, you know, I cannot imagine, you know, driving to work in an orderly fashion, no matter what speed. And, and you, I guess you would ask me, if you were driving with me and you, and you heard the opening of the show here where I talked about, you know, we always have to overcome these, these boundaries out here. The question would be, do you think I pay attention to those speed limit signs? Yeah, exactly. Not, not exactly out there. I think they're really more of a guideline. That doesn't mean that I drive 120 miles when it says 70 out there. Not that I haven't, but uh, I typically don't do that. Uh, but <laughs> I apologize. So what you want to do, though, is, you know, there's signs, folks, and, and certainly you have to be aware of signs. Signs are one way of each of us as drivers being able to communicate with each other. You know, if you're driving down the expressway and you know that there's merging traffic, it makes sense to allow that uh, traffic to merge in with you. And so you have to adjust your speed out there. There's always signs that help you to identify what it is that you should do. It's the same thing in trading out here. Trading is no different. It's just a matter of being able to learn those signs out there. And it's really key to be able to learn those signs. And it helps to be able to put more than just one sign together. You know, if we take a look here on the 30-minute chart of the ES Mini, if you're listening to us on the radio, maybe you're driving to listen on tfnn.mobi. Thank you for doing that. If you are stay in a stationary spot, you can always catch the uh, this show here streaming live. Just go to the homepage of tfnn.com. Over on the right-hand side, you'll see the uh, little smartphone devices. Click on that. This show will stream live to you. You can catch the archive of this show. You may not have the same tool that I use here on my uh, software, but you certainly would have a tool to calculate retracements uh, in between swing points. And swing points are nothing more than uh, major intersections. Major intersections where it is that you see people making a uh, large number of people making a, a tour, a turn, a U-turn, a left-hand turn, a right-hand turn. In the markets, we take a look at those swing points. And what's so important is we measure, we measure between one swing point and the next. And if you take a look at the ES Mini, if you were measuring the uh, swing point, so I would say right about the uh, lows here at around 8.30 in the morning, somewhere right around the 1492 uh, level. This is 8.30 in the morning on February 27th. If you go from that low all the way to the high that was put in at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on uh, February the 28th out there, if you went from that low to that high, what you would see is as that hammer candle was forming, you got to a point uh, 786 retracement. Now, I just happen to have this great tool on my system that allows me to measure uh, both retracements and expansions between swing points. When you have multiple, now there are a number of different reasons here why you would have, why, you know, you're always looking for where the bulls are hanging out. And they can't hide. And they can't disguise themselves. That's why we take a look at these different candle configurations out here. So as the market was moving down in that 10 o'clock time frame, and I did say, as my good friend Lee Corso says, not so fast to all those bears out there, not so fast, because we had the market moving down into oversold territory. We had the market pulling back into a 0.786 retracement, into as well a 0.618 retracement out there. So we had several factors coming together, converging in one place. Whenever you have multiple factors converging in one place, a lot to learn. Doesn't mean that it's going to hold because you can learn as much from failure. In fact, even each of us in our lives have learned probably more from failure than we have from success out there. But you learn from both. You want to be able to pay attention and put all these signs together, especially. In fact, if you want to be able to drive faster, 
in life. You need to be able to put these signs together as quickly as you possibly can. There is no shortcut out there. In fact, I can prove it to you that there is no shortcut that will save you time. Would you like me to prove that to you? Why don't I just digress? I've got a few minutes here. I'm going to, in fact, to each of you, take out a piece of paper. And those of you that are driving, you can do this mentally. Let me show you, because you might think that, that there, if you do less, that, uh, you know, that uh, you can do something, you can get there quicker. And it's just not the case. I want you to take out a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil right now. Now, in cursive, which, you know, is uh, none of us really write that much these days. I don't think most of us are at a keyboard here. But in handwriting, you know, I want you to write out your full name. I want you to write out your full name. In fact, you could do this probably about three or four times if you were to time it, probably to write out your full name. Now, some of us have longer names than others. But if you, you know, if you wrote out my full name, I could probably do it in about three seconds. If I did it, you know, maybe 10 times in a row, maybe I could get it down to 2.8 seconds or something like that. But if you wrote out your full name and you did it as clear and as fast as you can, no shortcuts out there. Just time yourself. Have somebody time it. You know, you got a clock or what have you. you got a little phone. Now, let me show you why just, you know, uh, doing fewer steps is not going to save you more time in life. Now, if I tell you to go write your name, and all I want you to write is every other letter, every other letter. So in Steve, it wouldn't be the, it be, wouldn't be S-T-E-V-E, it would be the S and the E and the E. But if I ask you to do that, that first time that you write your name out, is that going to take you longer or shorter, even though you got fewer letters to write? That's right. It's going to take you longer because you have to understand the patterns. Well, that's really what it is like in the markets. Eventually, once you figure out the pattern and what the every other letter in your name would be like, then, yes, it would be faster. Would it be twice as fast? No. Yeah. You know, that's not how potential works out there. When you learn the patterns, folks, when you learn these patterns, whether it's candlestick patterns, which you really need to know because that's the language of the markets out here. You want to understand the breathing patterns, the retracement patterns, using relative strength, MAC. I don't care what tools it is that you use. Each of them need to be able to have candlestick patterns out there or just simply patterns in life. That's the way that it works. That's the way that you really speed things up. Sometimes you have to learn more and do more and understand the patterns before you can really speed things up in life. But there are no shortcuts. You have to understand those patterns out there. And maybe that's my little trick or way of being able to just easily show each of us out here. If we just took something as simple as your name, and you can use this on anybody. You can, if you didn't try it and you were just listening, go try it. Even if you try to outsmart it, even if you say I'm smart enough and I can figure out what those letters are, it's all about that conscious mind out here. You know what you're doing. It is not going to be faster the first time. The tenth time, maybe it'll be faster. You'll figure out that pattern. That's exactly what it is that happens inside the markets. That's how you put these things together. Well, now what's the pattern here? Right now what we're seeing here is we're mostly seeing retracements, 0.618 retracements. Here we've got a expansion coming down into the time frame here at about uh, 1230 last night. 12.30 early this morning. You had coming together a 2.618 expansion and a 0.618 retracement out there, just in the EES Mini. It's a beautiful thing, folks, just like you. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. What type of investor are you? conservative, moderate, or aggressive. No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. You know, you heard that little spot. Maybe you heard that spot. They're talking about the Tiger's Den. And if you haven't had a chance to uh, test out the Tiger's Den, go to the homepage of TFNN.com. Do it. A great group of uh, people in there, folks that are willing to uh, help uh, provide you with trade ideas. Just a great uh, community of folks. And in fact, uh, during, uh, during the uh, last segment here, we had uh, John from the Deep South. Deep South in Texas, he wrote, your mind is like a picture show. Your dreams are projected on a screen in your mind. Play the picture over and over. And I agree with uh, John. And what I want you to do, you know what a lot of folks will do out there, and I agree, your, your mind is like a, a picture show out there. What a lot of folks will do, though, is they'll keep replaying the last chapter. Even in their mind, they'll keep rereading the chapter of the book. And folks, if you want to do the next act, you can't keep replaying the last chapter. If you replay the last chapter, you're going to end up getting those same results out there. So expand. Get some of that potential out here. If we go take a look at the potential of the uh, Shanghai, the Shanghai moving down, uh, what, uh, 90 points. It was 3, almost 4% last night, taking out a swing point with volume. So let's go take a look at the Shanghai. There's a lot to probably be learned here. Taking out a B point with volume. The B point here that we're taking a look at is the uh, low from February 26 out there. That was at about the 2396 level. Your eight point on here is the highs uh, from February 18th. Uh, that level was up at the uh, 25, uh, 2553. That's your eight point. Your one to one takes you in about into about the uh, 20. 
321 level, 2278. That would be your 1 to 1.272. Now it's come off this uh, C point here with conviction. So it's come off with conviction. It's going to do more than a 1 to 1. A to B equals CD. More likely probably a 1 to 1.618. But let's take the Shanghai and let's move it back here just a bit. Because what I want to show you... You know, and those of you that have been listening to the show out here, you know, we talk about these, the importance of understanding your expansion and your contraction levels, your Fibonacci expansion and contraction. And what you're taking a look at here on the screen, you're taking a look at a 1.272 butterfly buy pattern that the Shanghai had created. All the way back here, we're coming back to the time period of September 6, 2012. Now, the expansion was of a set of swing points, that swing point being the January 6, 2012 low right around the 2234 mark, all the way up to the high, this little shooting star looks like was put in on February the 27th out there, out of 2596. Now, the reason why you want to understand these areas, these expansion areas, it's really going to be helpful when you're going ahead and placing your stops. Now, I am not a proponent of using tight stops. I don't have a problem of you stopping out of a trade because it didn't move in your way, but what I don't like doing is I don't like like using such a tight stop that you're inside the average true range, the average noise of the actual day's trade just to be knocked out. I don't mind you using a tight stop saying, you know what, if it does close below this level, I'm not going to wait to be stopped out. I'm going to go ahead and take a smaller loss. That's different in using a wide stop, in, or that's, that's different than ignoring what the average true range uh, of a, a trade is in one single day out there. That's just my philosophy, but I'm going to share with you all of my philosophies. Now, what I want you to really understand when you're also using stops is if, if one level doesn't hold this, this case here of support, what you have to be aware of is it's going to move the, the equity of the trade is going to move likely to that next level. In this case here, if a 1.272 butterfly fails, it'll move to a 1.618 level. Well, what we can see here is this trade worked originally. It worked really well. In fact, it had a nice little sign of strength and a gap up and a wide ranging bar. It had everything that it needed on September the 7th out there, even on the following trading session on the uh, September the uh, 10th as it came back from the holiday. Moved just slightly higher out there, but boy, it gave way. And when it gave way and it failed, where did it move to? Now let's just take a look at an expansion of swing points. The same expansion of swing points that gave us the 1.272 level. Let's take a look at the expansion. And as we take a look at exactly where this moved down to was the point was the 1.618 expansion of that same set of swing points. Did it move down to the exact number? Of course not. It's a guideline. It's just like that speed limit sign that says 70 miles an hour. Do you really think they mean 70? Or do they mean eh, 79 or 82? That's right. It's more of a guideline out there. 2053 looks like that was the exact expansion out here. What the actual Shanghai did before it then took off got down to a low of about 2000 and oh, maybe it was 2032 was the exact 2.618. It gets down to 2041 out there. So it moves down to that next level. Now imagine if you were taking that trade and you said, you know what? I can take the heat because I'm looking at this as being a longer term trade. I can take the heat and I'm going to have my stop underneath that uh, 1.618 expansion out there. You would certainly not have been stopped out on the trade. Or if you were stopped out because the 1.272 level busted, you would know to be taking a look and coming back in on that trade as it moved to the next floor in the elevator on the way down. That's exactly what the Shanghai did. And then it had a real nice move to the upside. Unfortunately, the Shanghai now looks like it's on a down elevator. Significant volume last night. Shanghai should be at least pulling back to the 2200 level. 877-927-6648. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
just recently on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF. And over the same two trading days, Market Insight subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We got the uh, Dow up 34 points right now. S&P's down three, composite down eight. Small caps off uh, two points. Microsoft down six ticks. Intel up 20 cents. Uh, Google's up four bucks and change. Apple down three bucks right now, trading out at about the uh, 427 level. Uh, boy, taking off to the upside here this morning. Uh, Stratasys, SSYS, one of the 3D printer systems out there, up $7.50 right now. It's up about 12%. Uh, you do have uh, Google up five bucks and change. Hess Corp, H E S, up three dollars and change. It's about four and a half percent, up nine percent. Four Star Group, F O R, is a ticker symbol. Trans Ocean Limited, R I G, up about three percent, a buck fifty one out there. Target, Target, T G T, up about two percent this morning. It's just over a dollar to the upside. 3D Systems also participating. Uh, well, was participating, really just up about 40 cents right now. Apple leading the charge to the downside off a couple of bucks. Right behind them, Select Comfort, uh, S -S -S -C -S -S is the uh, ticker symbol. They're off 13%. I don't see an earnings report, uh, but they are down uh, pretty hard, 13% uh, percentage-wise. One of the leaders to the downside, Cell Gene, CELG, off a couple bucks and change. New Star, NS, off a couple of bucks. Rio Tinto off a... Uh, 
couple of dollars as well, a buck seventy. Uh, you've got Caterpillar off a buck fourteen. Again, our call number eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Let's take a look. Let's start off by taking a look at Apple out here. Apple trading uh, just above four hundred twenty seven dollars. What did Apple do on Friday? Let's go ahead and blow this up here on the uh, chart. What Apple did on Friday? It took out the swing point low. That swing point low was four thirty five. Even Stephen, that was from the date of uh, January the 25th out there. 43 million shares to the uh, downside on that date. However, uh, yesterday, under, yesterday I should say Friday, taken out with uh, quite a bit lighter volume. Uh, less than 50%, 19 million shares. 19 million shares going against 43. Doesn't matter, you close below that volume or not, unless it breaks back up inside there today. Uh, you know, it, it, Apple will just continue to trade lower. Where is it going to trade to? Well, of course, we've got this big gap that Apple is now trading inside. That's what it did on Friday. And the gap I'm referring to where there was a, a sign of strength for sure at this gap, but it's an open gap. Uh, this takes you back into the January 25th time frame. Let's uh, pull this back. We'll take a look at that gap. Here, that gap actually, uh, the 24th, the high of that gap is uh, 425.10. So 425.10 is what you want to kind of write down on a sheet of paper, just like I am. Only I can't write that well this morning. 425.10, that's the high of that session. The low is 422.30. So 422.30 to uh, 425.10 is where Apple is headed. The volume there, if you benchmark it against the day where it actually, prior to the uh, breakout, if we take a look at the, where it... Let me make sure I had the right numbers. I didn't have the right numbers there. My cursor moved over. 425.10, that was the right number. And the low of that session, 419.55. Sorry about that. 49, I don't want to give you bad information. 419.55, and that had 19 million shares. So it's not a, as Apple comes back into that gap area, uh, it's coming in. We're taking the 19 million shares. The day of the 24th out there was a lighter volume day. So as Apple comes, the actual volume that it's going against on that gap has got 34 million shares, and that low there is the uh, 443.73. So that is where uh, 443, let's see, where's it at? Well, it's already below that. So that is where, so Apple's going to go fill that gap. Of course, I knew that, I just forgot. So Apple is just simply going to come down and at least test that area. Now, we know we've got a confirmed A to B equals CD down inside Apple, and that A to B equals CD down just the one-to-one, -one, just to remind you of what that price point is. Now, I'm going to use the easier A to B equals CD down here. I'm going to use the more conservative one. The more conservative one will take you into the price point of right around 405, but it's really probably more likely the 350 a range where you would see Apple uh, trade down into, and that is its 1 to 1.2728 A to B equals CD. We'll know for sure when we see the uh, bulls show up here inside Apple, but they are not out there uh, yet. Uh, let's go take a look at some of these stocks here that are popping and dropping, and then we'll go over and take a look at the futures market and see what uh, they're doing right now. The Dow's off 55 points. So we'll take a look at some of the Dow stocks as well. The leaders in there pulling the uh, Dow down, we'll see what they're doing. But let's uh, start off by taking a look at some of these stocks here that are popping and dropping. you got Stratasys, so let's go look at this. SSYS, this has had some institutional selling in it, uh, although I think this equity here has held up better than 3D Systems, Triple D out there. Gapping up nicely this morning uh, with some volume here. So, so far, with nine minutes of trading, this is uh, up with 853,000 shares. And as I say, the, the volume to the downside, the institutional selling so far has really not been too bad. Uh, big institutional selling, some volume off of, uh, close to being off of the top here on January 29th, 917,000 shares on the way down. So that's going to be an area where it's going to test. It's right now moving into the downdraft day from February 14th. That had 2.2 million shares. So it should have no problem taking on that level having 866,000 shares here this morning. As this thing was pulling back, it was pulling back right into this area here. It's why you want to make sure that you're paying attention to your volume bars on any kind of chart. So in the case of uh, Stratasys here, I'm going to go ahead and draw the line across both from the top and the bottom of that bar. We'll go ahead and make that in black. So make both the uh, top and the uh, bottom out here. And you can see that uh, those buyers, because there were sellers that day as well, but uh, those buyers are in here certainly supporting, looks like they're supporting uh, Stratasys. The volume on that uh, bar 
was uh, 4.7 million shares, just under 4.7 million shares from September the 18th. So we know where the bulls are at, in fact, uh, supporting this equity. Now, gaps get closed. We're taking a look at the uh, gap here on uh, Apple and uh, Stratasys. Maybe, depending on the volume here today, if this were to pull back down in close the gap into the highs of uh, Friday, that would be maybe somewhere around 64 bucks. Do that on lighter volume. Might not be a bad play out there. You would go ahead and close that uh, trade out if it closed below the swing points back in the uh, late September time frame. Looks like right around the $54 area. That's on Stratasys out here. Uh, because if it closes below that, what Stratasys will do is it'll come back and it'll come perhaps and test the uh, gap from April the 13th out there. Uh, the April 13th gap. Uh, was where you saw a uh, decent, that was where the real breakout is. So the nice buy on Stratasys, if it ever were to pull back, then let's take a look and see if there is some possibility. Is really this gap right here. That is where the real breakout started on this equity. And so just to give you the date and the time, we're looking at April 13th and the price point of right around the $35 uh, level. Uh, so now if we take a look at, uh, let's look at the A to B equals CD down that this thing either completed or was close to completing. And what, what the, a, the B point that was taken out here was taken out with volume. So let's take, uh, so we'll use the red line to go across this one. The B point of an A to B equals CD down on Stratasys, SSYS. And why, why I'm actually spending more time on this equity, you know, than something else. I think the 3D printers out there, I think those are places where you're going to want to be looking for some longer term uh, investment uh, uh, opportunities, trades out there. Uh, so, you know, when the uh, leaders, when the next leaders show up, it may be, some of these may actually be in that uh, category. But if we take a look at the A to B equals CD down, so let's see what pattern here completed, a 1 to 1.272. The A point on Stratasys was the high of January 22nd out there, 92.30. That's your A point. Your B point is the low on January 31st, 7409. That had 813,000 shares. The B point was taken out with volume, 2.2 million shares on February the 14th out there. Now, the 1 to 1A to B equals CD, that completed here on the 20th of February. No bulls showed up here. In fact, he had a bullish candle here on Friday. It was the first time that you really saw any bulls. You had a little piercing candle here, I should say, on February the 27th out there. But we can see it completed to 1 to 1.272. A to B equals CD. We take a look at the retracement. Let's see if this turned out to be a true Gartley buy pattern, meaning that it come back into the 0.618 or 786 level, and it did. But it turned out to be a nice 0.786 Gartley buy, at least at this stage is what it looks like. What does that actually look like? We go ahead and color that in because I have the Crayola crayons out here in my system. That's the blue area. That is the uh, Gartley buy pattern, uh, which was really, it says on my screen, if you're looking, it says 84%, 84%, 0.786, pretty close, uh, because we just use those really as guidelines out here, and you're waiting for the uh, bulls to show up. So Stratus is not looking too bad. Want to we'll peek back in on that uh, tomorrow, uh, but that, much different than 3D systems. Let's go take a look at uh, 3D systems out here. Let's put that up on the uh, screen. And I'm not saying the 3D systems might not set up for a trade, but the problem with 3D systems is when you take a look at it to the uh, downside, major institutional selling out here. Just take a look at that gap to the uh, downside. Here, let me refresh my screen. Make sure I've got, oops, that didn't refresh a darn thing. Let's refresh it here. And if we take a look at uh, 3D system, there we go. That's why I refreshed it. You know, this truly does have volume off the top on that January 28th day. 17 million shares. You also had... You know, it's got a high volume swing point low right now, which is the trading session from February 25th out there. So your setup on 3D systems could be, because it's also completed an A to B equals CD down. However, it's going to be a test of this uh, February 25th areas where you'll get your first release of information. If we take a look at that, A to B equals CD down as well. Also making a 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD down. So you got two of both those uh, equities here making the same pattern to the uh, downside. However, I don't believe Stratasys had this type of volume on its session as it was making that uh, 1 to 1.272. And I'm referring to the uh, Jan uh, February 25th, uh, 2013 uh, level. The low there is 3028. I revisit that maybe at that 3028 level. If you can hold that area on uh, lighter than uh, 4.5 million shares, maybe that is giving you a, a setup uh, there. That's on 3D systems. Let's go take a look at Select Comfort out here. That is the leader in the clubhouse to the downside right now, both percentage-wise 
and dollar wise off about three dollars and fifty cents so uh... the market uh, even though the market is trading down not seeing any major destruction out here other than a, a good night's sleep and that would be on select comfort systems s c s s off about uh... seventeen percent right now so gapping down with some volume of course this had some problem before but let me go ahead and refresh my screen i haven't uh... make sure that let me make sure i've got all the uh... Accurate data here. Okay, we do. So this morning here, so far, trading for 15 minutes, down with 1.3 million shares. This thing gap down. This is a third gap. Unfortunately, it's not the exhaustion gap on the way down. The exhaustion gap uh, would require this to be a larger gap than either of the first two. The second gap, the, the one that took place most recently, was January 25th. If we take a look at it in dollar-wise, that gap down was from 27.09 to the level of uh, 24 bucks, so you have three dollars and nine cents uh, this morning. Let's take a look at it. Uh, you're taking a look at 2002. We're going to call it 20 bucks uh, to uh, 1830. So only two dollars, two dollars and thirty cents. This one here was what did I say? It was 2709 to 24. So it's three bucks. Yeah. So it didn't do it both in dollar. You need to do it in dollar and percentage-wise. Your first gap comes all the way back out here. So take a look at institutional selling and some volume off of the top here. Uh, you do have some markdown going on in Select Comfort. And we're not talking about the uh, president's sale where they mark down their mattresses. We're talking about the markdown sale where the stock gets marked down here. You can see that first institutional selling coming in on October the 18th out here as it moved down with 4.6 million shares. So that uh, is continuing. The, the markdown phase is a nasty thing because to a certain extent it doesn't let you out. Where is this traveling to right now? It's traveling into the uh, to a period of when it was moving to the upside when there was a breakout session. That breakout session was October 20th and the volume of the upside was 7.2 million shares. Uh, so far 1.5 in early trading, 1.5 million shares to the uh, downside. Uh, let's take a look at the larger A to B equals CD on this that really it's set up. Let's actually put the weekly chart for Select Comfort up on the uh, screen here. Uh, just give me a moment here. I want to take a look at this. So let's let's take a look at areas of potential support on this uh, equity. This is the weekly basis. Now we're obviously, you know, the week here has just begun. So it's Select Comfort. Looks to me like what it's going to first do, it's going to come back and test this weekly swing point, which takes you back really to the October 4th low. This is the week of October 7, 2011. And this is anywhere from 1197 to 1563 to 1713. And that is where it wants to uh, come come to. Now at that level, interestingly enough on this, you had a pretty decent breakout. The breakout actually occurred in this on October the 21st out there. That week had 15 million shares. And if you go back just a little bit further to the left on Select Comfort, you also had a, a nice little breakout here the week of April 22nd, 2011, up at the 1750 level. So right around here, right around this swing point, which is really the October 7th, uh, 2011 area is where this thing ought to be able to find some support. If it breaks through those areas, then that spells curtains. Then I guess they're selling curtains as well as uh, mattresses out here because your next swing point on this, folks, doesn't get down until about the $5 range. And this is coming off of a high most recently here in September 2012 out at the $34 mark. So it has lost 50% of its value in about uh, less, it looks like about six months time or less out here. That's on select comfort. Certainly a reason to be using uh, stops when you are uh, trading. Uh, let's go in and take a look here at that ES mini. Let's look at that 30 minute chart. Let's look at the EKG here as the uh, market was uh, moving down. We can see here just simply on the ES mini, just making retracements to the uh, downside, about a 0.786 retracement as it moved down into the uh, as it's moving into this 10 o'clock session here. 877-927-6648. Dow's off 32. S&P's off a buck right now. We'll be right back. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. 
Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor, Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long Long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow is uh, down 32 points right now. s and P's off one. Let's uh, go peek in on some of the uh, commodities out here, the currencies. Let's start off taking a look at the euro, U.S. dollar. We can see this is trading out at the 130.91 uh, uh, level, really having just a, a little sideways day here. Now, the euro-U.S. dollar currency pair has uh, completed a one to almost a one to 1.618. A to B equals CD down close enough right now. Uh, that was on a Friday. Right now, having an inside day, not releasing any information here. 
uh, to us uh, whatsoever. Uh, now, the information has released is the mere fact that it has formed that 1 to 1.618, A to B equals CD. If we take a look at retracements uh, off of this. Now, the last time on the way up here, it also made a 1 to 1.618, A to B equals CD. That A to B equals CD pattern on the way up started from November the uh, 13th, and it completed here on uh, February the 1st. And that was a 1 to 1.618, A to B equals CD up. What has it uh, done so far? A 1 to 1.618, A to B equals CD down. Hmm. Wonder if that's just a coincidence out here. Let's take a look at retracements off of the uh, low from November 13th all the way up to the uh, February 1st high out here. And uh, what it's done, it's really kind of like right in between the, uh, well, it's closer to the 0.786 than it is to the 0.618 level. You know, could the euro slide a little bit further? Yeah, it could make a perfect ideal pattern out there and get down to about the 129.865, but really very close here to uh, forming a, a Gartley buy pattern. We take a look at what that looks like, and you're into the oversold uh, territory out here. So what the euro needs to do in order for the uh, markets to move higher here, it needs to start. It needs to start moving up. It needs to say, "Yeah, this was a, a Gartley buy pattern out here." Or certainly, that would help because we've seen, you know, huge energy, huge energy inside the U.S. dollar index. Now, the currency of the uh, euro being the heaviest weighting structure inside there, about 58 percent of that uh, weighting there. So, what we can take a look at is because it's oversold. Now, if this just starts really drifting sideways here uh, for a few days, it's just simply going to be working off that oversold condition. If we take a look at what is that actual, I'll just I want to see what the uh, uh, expansions of uh, swing points here in that B to C leg. And this is really what I would be looking at, about 3.2. So a little bit over a, a nice piece of uh, pie, which that pie is 3.14. So it's not that uh, not that much for, uh, further. But right now, just simply traveling sideways, not providing you with much information, other than we know that it made a 1 to 1.6 on the way up. And now it's made very close to 1 to 1.618 on the uh, way down. That is on the uh, euro. Let's go take a look at the pound. The pound had been getting pounded here the last several trading sessions. Uh, right now, today, you've got bulls here trying to uh, step in. That's not a, a bullish candle here. So the pound just continuing to move sideways. Now, if we take a look at the uh, pound, let's put this on a, a weekly chart, a little longer term chart out here. Uh, the pound is below swing point levels. And so now let's just take a look at where that next floor is, the retracement off of this hammer candle. That comes all the way back to May 21st, 2010. Again, this is a weekly chart that we're looking at here. You can see that the pound looks like it actually wants to trade down to about 147 or so out there. <coughs> Excuse me. Still overcoming a little cold in the marketplace. Hopefully it sounds good on your end, better than it sounds on my end. Quick peek in here at the U.S. dollar index. Uh, we can see the U.S. dollar index making a 1 to 1.272A to B equals CD so far. However, this move here along the C to D leg, very powerful. Actually says the U.S. dollar index wants higher price out there. <coughs> Excuse me, the Dow is off 35. The S&P is off one. If you start, if you're off to start your day, thanks so much for joining us here. And I look forward to seeing you in the morning. Otherwise, stay tuned for the Money Masters show. And always remember this, folks. You have an amazing power within yourself, and that power is so strong, it'll produce a life of abundance, cure incurable diseases, build billion-dollar businesses, paint magnificent masterpieces, but most of all, folks, create fantastic, loving families. Thanks so much for being a part of the TFNN family. Have a great day. Look forward to seeing you soon. Take care, folks. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success and it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.